some of the other partnerships we have? Well, no, it seems like, yeah, I guess, you know, who, you know, who the, the suppliers are, who, you know, the, oh, the, yeah. the solar providers and, or, or maybe, you know, e, you know, EV vendors, you know, that sort of thing, you know, um, you know, the solutions that you, that you propose, you know, that connect to specific vendors. Um, you know, do people know like, oh, you know, those are the three, three vendors that, that Relay Power recommends. Um, and if you want others, then, you know, by all means go out and look for others. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so for Community Solar, we, we work with Syncarpa. Um, so they're one of the, the, one of the big community solar developers working across Maine. And we also do have um, relationships with a couple other community solar organizations. So we work with Nexamp. And we are also, well, finalizing an agreement with another company. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it yet, but we also have a, a partnership with um, Maine Solar Solutions uh, in terms of rooftop solar. Um, I know my colleague has been in talks with a number of different um, efficiency Maine providers. Um, and I don't think I have anything to speak of yet. And if we, you know, we're likely going to, um, you know, after the survey, tell people to start with uh, efficiency main essentially, um, if the recommendation is to take a home energy assessment. So in, in terms of visibility around who the providers are, yeah, absolutely. Um, we can be like very upfront and transparent with the providers that we're recommending. Okay, you wanna have any other, any other questions for, for Katie? Okay, great. Well, Katie, thank you so much for coming. Really, yeah. really appreciate it. This has been super helpful and, and um, well, yeah, educational. So it's great you guys are doing this. Great. Um, yeah, yeah, I appreciate the time. And um, again, I'm still uh, relatively new to this team, uh, but I, I am gonna take back some of these questions and get clar clarification on uh, some of the items uh, that you folks mentioned and uh, can definitely circle back with Sam uh, on those pieces. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Right. Very nice. Thanks for not getting Take care. Appreciate um. it. Okay. And then there were seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if we want to have a discussion now, of, you know, about, about that. I mean, we should probably have a little bit of a reaction. Um, uh, I was just saying, like I said, I think it's, I don't know what their product is. It's too early to say because I haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. It's really hard mm -hmm. to make a judgment. It's like, a, like I said, it's a data play, and we haven't seen the data. We don't know who sees what and how you can use it. So, mm -hmm. it seems mm -hmm. too early to assess. It's yeah. pretty simple. They're getting names for um, community solar people to go make sales pitches to. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get I get the business model, but the, the the question is if they're actually going out there and getting data. Uh, some of that can be you know, leveraged and useful, but again, what is the data? What's the level of it? How, how is, you know, and just that, that's what I'm, that's what I, I still don't understand. If it's a data play, which is what they said, what's the data? And then I can evaluate it. Yeah. I mean, it's probably yes or no questions primarily, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that. I'd be curious to see the survey for sure. Um, I'd love to get a copy yeah, I can, and one of my comments is, why, why wouldn't we just do that ourselves? If they put a flyer in everyone's electric bill, could we get the town to put a flyer in everyone's property tax bill, go to this website and gather the data and work on this ourselves? Mm -hmm. you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're close. The one thing that they'll do that we are not going to do, though, is they're saying these are our guys. Yeah. And it's hard to put the town in the position of, like I said before, of, of distinguishing between commercial providers. Yeah. The, so it's actually, in some respects, having a third party to say, they've met our criteria and here are all the providers and we've listed at the top, these six who meet our criteria, something like that, can't, could, because the, we can't do that as a town the same way. That has some additional value. Of course, but we don't, don't know how those partnerships were determined, right? It yeah. could be college buddies, you know, with the owner, right? But, so you know, who knows that they're actually the best ones out there for people. Well, I, I, again, if... The, Given how they describe their play and how they're talking about how they're sort of vetting people who've been, in, you know, I would expect if if their product really is saleable that they would actually do that. They would say we check these things about these providers, and that's why you can trust us. 
you know, here's everybody, but these six have passed our process and, you know, and they've agreed to work with us and we agreed to work with them. So, but. They don't strike me as people with capable, of, she didn't strike me, if she's representing the organization, people are capable of making that assessment. Yeah. They get the stuff on people's houses. Again, I, I, I don't know. It, could be great, could be terrible. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen anything. Um, if Matt comes back and says, hey, what do you guys think? You know, should we sign up with these guys? Do we have a recommendation for him? You know, yes, no, conditional. Um, it sounds like it's yeah. conditional right now. I would, say yeah. we ask for some more, I would say we ask for some more information. Yeah. So we get that, we'll make a decision. You, you, we got to start with essentially, what, let's see a product sample. What are other towns getting? No. It's like, that's yeah. where you start. What's the product? Who sees, this is data. Who sees what? What do you expect? And when and that may be, this is what they see in Massachusetts. Here's what we expect them to be able to see in Maine. And then you could make an evaluation. It, it could be great. It could be not so great. I can't, I can't tell you. But, you know, it, it, if there's a piece there that actually does really fit with, you know, we're going to try and evaluate what the town's carbon footprint is and gives you a way to sort of take the bits of data that you do get and forecast it out for what the whole town would look like. Some of that may be really useful in terms of how to use, you know, go through your um, climate goal setting cl carbon footprint process. Could be. So what, what does everybody think about the other thing that might be out, out there that this is a company that does represent uh, certain developers and that we're using something from them and that uh, maybe that might be, I don't know if it's conflict, but it's a, a it, we, we are cherry picking their, their project product, but they do represent certain developers. They're not, they're not a clearinghouse or, or, or an information educational group. So I'm not really sure how to handle that. What does people think about that? Or is that a big deal? I think, I think it, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead, John. It, it is somewhat problematic. Again, you have to see what's their selection criteria. And again, and, and whether it's we list everybody and recommend these that we've been through, or is it, I think that's less problematic than just saying we only rec we're only recommending people who've cut us a deal uh, and, and we've uh, uh, vetted as well. It's, it's a little more problematic. But I'm not, not, not that it's a no, but I think it is a little more problematic. Yeah, I mean, I think as long as, oh, I mean, yeah, there are a number of you know, potential, you know, issues. But I mean, I think if at the end of it, you know, if it's, if it's clear that, okay, you know, you know, at the end of the survey, okay, we recommend, you know, these three vendors for either the solar panels you've expressed interest in um, or for community solar, you know, then that's like, these are the three that we work with, you know, but of course, for more information, and for other options, you know, go to the go to the, you know, the, the, the main department of public utilities, for example, um, that kind of that kind of thing. I mean, I think I think there are probably some some caveats you can put up there, so it doesn't look as if we're you know directing people I mean, to use only uh, these three or four. Again, it depends on the level of work they're doing. I think it, you know, in some respects, it is valuable to have a third party out there that's saying, "I've looked at community solar providers, and these companies all have projects coming on, and these you know yeah. they have." And, and whatever, you know, they have this level of financial capacity or whatever, however else they're sort of evaluating. And the ones I mentioned actually, you know, I'm aware of do have projects coming out. I'm not sure how they're selecting them, but again, you can't evaluate their partnering process until you know, have some sort of description of who they're selecting and how. So that's fair. Big... People are probably looking for simplicity and clarity to some extent. Um, and if, and if, if this process, frankly, kind of, you know, narrows the, 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 the number of options that they feel like are, at, you know, on their, on their plate, they may be grateful, frankly. I mean, you know, if, if those, if those products, you know, are competitive, you know, and are legitimate, which I'm, you know, we'd have to, you know, verify that that would be the case. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, some people love doing tons of homework. I know, I know, John, you, you, you've got probably a massive spreadsheet of different solar um, developers. <laughs> Um, I, I, honestly, I looked around for just speaking for myself. I, I looked around enough to say to myself, you know, these are all pretty much the same. What I want is the the company that's got the best the, the best track record, the best discount, and, yeah. and projects coming online soon. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Honestly, that narrows the field pretty quickly. And then I had to sort through, okay, who's actually the project owner and who's the marketer and who's the, yeah, there's like a yeah, whole, yeah. the whole feeding chain of it. like Syncarpa actually, it has local partners that are the ones that are doing everything. So. Well, and that's the case with this, of course, these are obviously, they don't own any assets at all. Uh, I, yeah, no, I know. It's like, I, 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 I went direct to the project developers to get the contract. Well, of course, of course. That's great. I mean, that's, that's just, <coughs> yeah, that's smart. But I do like the idea of, of having more um, interactive engagement with the town um, as, you know, as much as is reasonable. Um, you know, again, you know, doing a survey, it's in some capacity in context of the town's climate action plan. It's, it's you know, I think it goes beyond the purview of, of this committee, maybe in this and whatever relay wants to do kind of goes beyond the purview of our, of our committee solely too. Um, but I do think there's a benefit of having, and maybe it's even in our mandate to kind of to provide I mean, an educational kind of, you know, ongoing a service. Um, and not that you want to like outsource the creation of that tool, you know, to a, you know, to a private company. Um, but it's a way to get us to where we're actually having, hopefully, I think, you know, more of a dialogue with the town, but unless John, to your point, you know, they take, you know, that engagement that the communities have, have put into this survey and they take it owner and, and run off with it and sell that information to you know their partners, which would not be cool. Again, Jake said, the data play: who sees what, who owns what. You yeah. Know, f- frankly, what I'm evaluating it against is um, hiring a, 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 a smart consultant to work with a group of high school students to do the survey we include with the water bill, and how far we get. Because frankly, <laughs> it might be awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, right. that, would, that, would, that, that would be a leading alternative, at least in my mind. Um, yeah, you know, that's, that's great. Get some bodies with some, some outside guidance, do their senior project or something like that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know we've talked about doing kids. But this doing is a great example of something they, they could, you know, put some real um, meat to. It's not, I mean, yeah. this kind of stuff of sticking a survey in a water bill isn't that hard. Tell my goddaughter, who's the programmer for the Cape Elizabeth robotics team, Mm. Would be gl- would love to write a program and do some kind of analysis, something like this for the town. You, you know, that Perfect. doesn't surprise me at all. That you Better do it. Do to be the head of the robotics team. Yeah. <laughs> she, want, hey, she wants to go to MIT. Yeah. Yeah. She's her, well, she's, 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 she's a, a set yeah. above most people. She's she's in a different universe, basically. But I, yeah. Well, I. I I don't want to discount the outside some level of outside yeah. expertise because, but I, you know, I. I I, I think engaging a third party to do it all for us is not going to get us where we want. I think if we're going to do this relative to our own climate footprint and planning, we want to have the data and own the data and control the data and be able to to keep it, maintain it going forward. And if you're going to do that, you got to take an approach that will allow you to do that, even if you're working with the I think the high school party. project is really pretty interesting idea. I, I've been a huge proponent of that for a lot of different things. I've been trying to get the... I've been ha- early conversations with the, with with the stats teacher to get the see if we can get a high school team that will do the um, uh, a serve um, an estimate of student population of of essentially the the enrollment forecast that they pay consultants to do all the time. It's not a hard problem. The, the, get a couple of the stats students and government students to do that survey um, mm-hmm. in detail with an outside advisor be awesome and if they're good at it frankly they can do it for all the towns around the area and get paid for it but well, anyway we, it's yeah. different different issue but I, I think there's a lot of room to work with 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 resources in town to do a, a lot of this kind of stuff yeah. well, i think we can tell them that you know we can just proactively tell them that you know we heard the presentation we have some questions you know they're going to get back to us um and then we'll be in a position to make a you know, a recommendation up, down, or otherwise, uh, you know, at a future, at a future point, but it's, we're not going to rush into it. We would not recommend the time rush. We could also strong, see what JP Cog is going to do too. So my, we could my, get my strong recommendation is, is get a sample of the product. That's it. It's yeah. They may product. have a, just a limited number of questions that are geared to what they're doing. And then we might want to hold, whole non- another set of questions that some that somewhere they, like, they've the got a mock do. somewhere they've got a mock have a mock-up of what the data look hope they hope the data will look like when they're done that's what i want to see where are we going 
they've been working with this town of Northboro, Mass, for a couple of years, right? So they've got something. Yeah. But yeah, we'll just see, where, see minimum, what it is. At a minimum, we'd probably want to talk to Northboro and see what they mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Northboro, by the way, has a, I may be wrong, but it might be the North. Bridge, I think. Anyway, oh, North, yeah. is it North? What's the, was it North Bridge or Northampton? I can't remember what. Not Northampton. I think it may be North Bridge. I don't know. North Bridge. North they Bridge. all sound alike. <laughs> if you take the survey, <laughs> if you take the survey, you'll probably find out what kind of information they're gathering, and what they're collecting. Yeah, Google North and North Bridge what relay what survey. What they're doing with it is another question, but at least you know what data they're gathering. Well, I think I think Katie's eager to answer our questions, um, you know. So we'll we'll you know maybe we can see what they say. But yeah, if you, if, if, if someone wants to do some um, uh, kind of you know under undercover surveillance, kind of you know see what the survey is all about, then <laughs> let let us know. Yeah, um, but it's not a crazy ass to see the product. No, no, not not at all. No, <laughs> um, but we can we can. I think we should eat a table maybe for another day. You know, what would a real um, kind of, uh, how could we work with the local resources, meaning the students? Um, and what sort of, you know, inter, you know ongoing, inter, you know, interactions do we want to have with the, with, with the community? That, I think that would be a great topic to talk about with the GP COGS folks and possibly a, the idea of sharing a climate person that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. Because, yeah. Because yeah. that, that, gives them a, some ability to really add more horsepower to what they're able to do on that part-time basis. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Um, we have to make a motion to table a recommendation until a future date. We don't have to, we don't, there's no, no, no vote on this anyway, so. So moved. Um, okay. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. This is, this is to table a decision. That's yes. All. Yeah, what I don't good. All right. Feel good about this. Okay. All right. Let's hopefully we can wrap up the thank you guys. This, this, that was a super good conversation. Um uh the solar procurement thing. I think I think we're very, very close. Hopefully, um we won't have to uh yeah, well, we can see what we have to discuss. Um, but you saw that um Hopefully you saw because I did. I, I intended to. I forwarded um, the responses that we got, but we got. Um, uh, we had a short list. Um, I, I asked some questions about. Um, you know, has the um, uh, PUC kerfuffle? Yeah, I think I actually used the word kerfuffle, which is a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> <Kerfuffle>. <laughs> Sorry about um, that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way I think. Um, did that cause any problems? Um, so, is there has their bid changed? Has their offer changed? Um, please clarify your termination um, clause, and when is the expected um, time for the project to, to go online? And so, um, so I sent those to um, Encore, Revision, and Nextamp. Um, and we got answers, um, and Richard very kindly put those in a spreadsheet. Again, thank you so much for doing that, Richard. Appreciate it. Um, I realize I I just. So I, I asked you this morning <laughs> and you did it um, quickly. So I appreciate your, your doing that so quickly. Um, but and, and nothing's really changed, I don't think, in terms of our analysis. Um, so, um, and what I sent out, I mean, lots of, you know, in some of the responses are just confirming, a lot of the responses are just yeah. confirming yeah. they already sent out. Mm -hmm. Any changes. So, yeah. any additions and changes I highlighted in the color. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the yeah. one thing I was, again, reflecting on um, the spreadsheet that Richard sent around was thinking about the discount off the tariff. Um, and if you got a relatively large discount off the tariff, which is going to float, getting out of it or finding someone else to take your position shouldn't be that big of a deal. No. The risk is relatively low because you know it's going to float and you know you're below that by a significant percentage. So, termination clause. So, yeah. so, so if, if I've got X number of hours and I've got it at 20% or 30% below the floating tariff rate, right. and I'm looking for, it's like, I, I, I've got more than I can use. Well, there, there should be, you know, I don't, how easy is it to, you know, 
I'm not sure what the mechanics are, but finding someone who would want to step into those shoes for that excess should be pretty straightforward. Because if anyone's still paying the regular tariff, it's a win. So, John, just let me add some color to that from, from, from statistically that I found out from other states and it, what I've been told. Uh, it, at this point where everybody gets knocked off and only so many projects get built because of transmission constraints, other constraints, then, then that field will be, definitely will be a seller's market. Basically, you will have, and, and this has happened even some of the more ominous, ominous programs, even the SMART program, you will find that, that the prices or the discounts will go down because the demand, the, it becomes a seller's market at that point. And so there'll be a lot more pent up demand at some point where we miss the boat. Okay, so I'm just adding a little fuel to your fire there. But that seems right. to be, you're, yeah. you're saying right now the supply is indeterminate. Once the supply gets more fixed, prices will go up essentially and the discounts go down. Right, exactly. One thing, I, I had a couple questions and I went through this. One is um, under Encore, what they, the response they sent back, they made the statement that they, we could reduce the contract if the town unable to use contracted amount. I don't know what that is. It doesn't mean a lot, Richard. It doesn't mean a lot if, if, uh, if, I mean, are they going to, if they would put that in writing, it would be great. But if for some reason they decide not to take that risk right. and you've got a contract, unless you've got it in contract, right? then th there's an issue there, right, for us. So I, 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 I thought the same thing. And my, my response was, great, we're really interested. Can you send us that contract wording? Yeah, I, other than that, it's, you know, I mean, remember, they, they, you know, despite what I just said about there being a seller's market, at any given time, you're going to have a reduction in their, in their ability, their revenue, when you do that, or somebody's got to go and resell it again. So there's at least another acquisition cost involved in this. So um, that's all. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense in itself. Anybody can say anything if they're not, if they're not willing to put in the contract. And that's pretty much it. Well, the only, the only thing that, it, that when I saw that, the only thing that I thought that it might be is that we could, instead of contracting for, for the maximum that we think we'd, we'd use, 600,000, you know, uh, without that, since we, if we're hung up for, if we need to cons consume everything we contract for, then we would, ha we would, we do 80% of 600,000. Well, that's but the idea. They call it, if we they call it utilization. Out, yeah. We, we contract for 600,000. Right. So this is what the, what the uh, recommendation of the MPUC is. And that's part of the disclosure statement. They don't want you to utilize a hundred percent. They recommend as a government group, that you not do that. And in fact, they, there, there is some question whether you can, can, unless you can prove that you actually are gonna increase your volume or, or you can justify it. They just don't want you to do it, okay? All right, so basically it's moot. The, the other, other thing- I, had, I couldn't figure out what, what Revision Energy was talking about when they said with the RECs, 18% yeah. discount with revision managing the RECs, what does that mean? That means they want to be the town's broker when we go to sell them. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. Look, you know, look the thing I is, look, you know, I look at this and it just, you know, to cut, th cut through it all, it's yeah. you do Encore if you believe they're going to get a project connected, and you do Next Stamp if you don't, and you kick revision out. That's, that's a simple way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, but the question is, uh, Tom, the question is, which, which part of the Encore do you want? Do you want the fix? Do you want the float? And, and my, my one reason why I like the float isn't because you're going to be a, you're picking a winner. Uh, you know, Tom, you've made a point more than once that, that if, the price, if the rates go up and they should go all the time, the winner is the fixed, okay? Yeah. And, and, but is it, from my point of view, is it is it our mission to speculate, or is it our mission as as an entity uh, to to take it as much uh, to reduce the risk at the same time and, and walk away from it? 
So that's that's the only point I was making about that. Well, for the Silk Landfill Project, we recommended the town, you know, take the um, uh, the tariff. Yeah, you know, and not, not, not the discount. We did. Yes, we yeah. did. We, we um, did because the intention yeah. there is to potentially buy that project out. Yeah. All right. That, again, that's our own. Uh, we know that, and we know yeah. that we're going to use at least as much as that project is going to produce. And I yeah. think also, what were what was the discounts that were off on then? They weren't yeah. I don't think, as high as the thirty two percent we're no. seeing here. No. Yeah, I think they were. I'm not sure they were. Check it out. But I'm pretty sure they were. Anyway, th that's water under the bridge anyway, as far well, as that goes. But my takeaway was very similar to Tom's. My my thought was, oh, looks like Encore is giving aggressive discounts to get market. And frankly, they'll be happy to take them back and resell them if you don't want to <laughs> use their aggressive discounts because they yeah. expect to lower them later. That, well, that was my that point. was. That was my take. And the other one, as I looked at it, the, the only hesitation with looking at going with Encore again is A, if you don't think they're getting a project built, and B, if you're concerned about uh, putting all the risk of the town in one basket because they're also building our project. Um, if there's, so you have a little bit of a uh, concentration of risk issue relative to that. But the difference, yeah. is, difference is big enough to make a difference to me. It's like 22 versus 32 is pretty big. So, have we seen anything in our dealings with Encore that would uh, give us confidence in them or, or lessen our confidence? Have we seen anything? No. I mean, you know, if we deal with Encore, I mean, it becomes a little bit easier for the town because yeah. they, they've got an agreement with them. They could just can uh, go piggyback right on some of that. And it, it's got to be they know the relationships have been established. I think it'll be a pretty much pretty smooth and, and uh, easy to deal with. And, and uh, hey, talk, talk. Tom made a point, I think, that, that that's worth re reviewing here. And he made, it, and he made a very quick point. Um, have we looked at uh, which farm will be designated towards us and when it will be built? And it's sort of, that's what it takes that, that question of who's going to be first, who, who's going to be second, who's going to be third? Have we, have, we, have we talked to anybody about that maybe as a final question? I, I don't think they said. I don't, I, I don't think they have either, but it might be a great question to ask because you can ask, okay, you're building so many farms, you've sold so much product so far. They all, by the way, all three have early stage build outs. They've been there early. But the question is, how many have been sold before us? So, the, so it would be, it's a very fair question to ask, okay, Who's going to be building and, and what, where are they going to be building this? What project is be built in uh, third quarter of this year or second quarter of this year or first quarter of next year? I think it's a very fair question. You're muted, Sam. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, well, we do know that Encore and Examp both have projects in you know Q4 21. I, I was just looking at just so you know, I was just looking at the spreadsheets. I'm not sure it was the final one from the landfill, but Encore's discount that was option on the floating rate was an 18% discount. That's if the town keeps the wreck. If they kept the wreck. Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, then it was, um, sorry, it was 22% if, the spot, if, the ta if they kept the wrecks. So here we're looking at 32%. So it is a different economic deal substantially. Yeah. What, one note on the timing. Um, uh, I did get a, a follow-up from Revision. They didn't have, have a date, which I, so I didn't think it was worth you know, sharing. But they said they, they're moving forward, moving forward on a solar farm in Sydney, Maine, which could fit Cape Elizabeth's load of 600,000 kilowatt hours. Um, when are you hoping to make a decision? So I'm not sure what it means by they are moving forward on a solar farm in Sydney, Maine. Um, other than that, perhaps I mean, that means that, well, again, there's no, there's no date to, associated with that. Um, that's one more data point that we, that we yeah, have. I guess, you know, to be, to be kind of honest about this, I just don't see revision as competitive. You know, I, I, I think, in, you know, they, they do great with kind of the home rooftop stuff, but I just don't see, I don't know how they make it in this space, looking at what the other people are doing and offering. Yeah. 
I have some, you know, I really question, can they deliver this stuff? And Tom, they've never won any bids when they aimed at the bid with these other guys have all won bids with yeah. other, other entities. Which we'll go oh, for sure. Again, I'm, I got they were 20%, next damn to 22%. They're, they're competitive. It's just a quick, he's like, they're not out of the ballpark, but, you know, Encore is clearly the most aggressive. I, I, and I, unless there's a problem, I would just say, have Encore build our, our fixed plant and, and go with them for the, flo the aggressive discount and the floating. <clears throat> I concur. Okay. Let's do Let's it. Let's vote. Just, I'm fine with that. Let's vote. Yep. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I move that's our recommendation. I guess. Okay, well, that's what you we got do. it. So on okay. car without Rex, thirty-two percent discount, voting. It's pretty nice. Hey, nice. Thanks for doing all that work, Richard. It's it's yes. really great. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, Richard, you're you're a go-to data analyst now, so yeah. <laughs> you have a reputation. I was doing it anyway, just so I understood what was going on. Yeah. All right. So all those in favor to recommend that the town. Um, uh, Explore proceed with the contract for thirty-two percent discount for six hundred thousand kilowatt hours. Say aye. Are we, are we doing that, that or the percentage? I thought it was eighty percent of our what we need. We don't want to go to the max. Right. So so, I mean, I guess like you know, there's there's still there's a between we we recommend Encore at, at this discount rate, and then yeah. is there like there's a discussion around exactly how much. Still, so five hundred thousand kilowatt hours. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Right. So let's just, you know. Yeah. So the motion is to recommend on on corp for this supplemental solar. Yeah. Full stop. Um, yeah. And then we'll let you know. The, the, it, the if they want a recommendation that. from us on the on the amount, you know, it's basically yeah. five hundred. Okay. I guess the other question is, we want to recommend it. What do we do? We need to do a similar recommendation, you know, an analysis like we did on the landfill with the economic stuff? What do we need to put together for the council? I mean, my impression from what I've, I've always heard from Matt is that this does not need to go through that same level of formality. Um, it's, it's just, you know, Matt can make the decision, you know, through his you know, normal procurement process um, okay. to buy more solar power. Okay. Um, it's not like it has to go to the town, town council. Okay. Like that. Has the um, town's usage changed at all with any upgrades that we, you've been doing with lighting or? Okay, so we should be able, able to figure out that number. All right. So I don't, think it's, I don't think it's likely to move around a huge amount until they redo the school buildings. Right. Should we, do we have a motion to recommend Encore 32%? So move. Second. Um, Wait, oh. Barbara, did you want to so, say before we, we do that? No, yes. I was trying to get the vote to ah. happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Nays. Okay, motion uh, accepted to recommend Encore discount rate to Matt, to, um, to, um, uh, yeah, you know, to, pro to proceed with that procurement. So, very cool. All right, there we go. Two down, one to go. And also, there are some additional little um, items I think we want to follow up on um, that I re remember in the meeting, in the minutes, um, that we had, you know, um, uh, assigned Perry to go research for us. So, <laughs> uh, we'll see if he did his homework or not. We'll put him on the spot. Um, so, um, anyway, the, the other kind of the official item on the agenda is uh, what do we do as a committee? What can we do as a committee around, you know, energy code recommendations for, for current or proposed buildings? Um, yeah, there was a discussion, you know, right in regards to the proposed um, multifamily building. Um, and, you know, should we be, should we basically what is our role you know and how do we engage the town on that how do we kind of you know help share our expertise and our feedback and our thoughts with the town um and you know again is that even our place as a committee to do that um so i think perry you actually asked matt sturgis town um uh, manager for 
you know, his feedback um, or his, 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 his guidance on that front. I think he, he said, I don't have the language in front of me. You may have it in front of you. Um, but he said, stay in your swim lane, basically, right? Pretty much. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I was looking for the email, but I can't find it right now. Yeah. Um, I think you should have shared it with us. Yeah, you shared that language. Yeah. I can um, I can resend it if I need to. It's okay. So it was a very quick conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'd like to just broaden out the context for a little bit because I think we did hit on something here that not quite captured by the title of the agenda item, but it's related. Because I, I do think it's important for the energy committee to uh, to weigh in and want to weigh in on major developments in town and, and, and because they they will have an impact and those impacts are not necessarily straightforward they're often complex but i think there is a, that that is exactly the kind of place that you want to be in you know, as an energy committee and more broadly speaking sort of in that climate uh planning place in terms of because that's part of your long-term planning and anything that's going to be a major development in town was go is going to have aspects to it like that. And I think um, we sort of narrowed it again a little bit to, to, to focus on uh, building building codes. Uh, and I, I, I'm not sure, I, I think that's one of the ways that we, we can, you can get at that. But I, I, do, I do think that, you know, it is a, um, a broader issue around- Actually, we can't, get at, we can't get at it through building code work. Okay. Because the, the state of Maine about 10 or 12 years ago changed the building code rules. There's a building code for the state of Maine and towns are prohibited from changing it. So we, you know, if, if Matt's response is let's do something for a building code or an energy, and it is a building and energy code, the town can't do anything about that in terms of code work. Um, my personal view is you know, looking at the remit that we were given is to advise the town on a whole bunch of things, including sustainability. The town clearly has those goals. And, and I get the point, we started talking about it before that, you know, it was out of discussion or meeting, but I think, I think it's within our scope. And I think we ought to chime in on the town. And what I, you know, what I don't know is, you know, some towns have sustainability ordinances. It's, it's a beginning, it's a, it's a growing trend. I mean, there aren't a whole lot of these things out here. I don't know how the energy fits in. I don't know how you do that with building code, but I think as, as, as Carrie also said, you know, we've got, you know, a proposal where the town is being asked to help fund this through the, through the TIF funding. And you know, clearly the data, you know, given that, you know, what abilities the town have to put conditions on it. And I know, I know that the development where Cape Integrated is and the housing they, that Zev Meyerowitz wants to put in front of it. And I know that issues with the lumbery, there were a whole bunch of conditions the town put on that stuff that aren't anywhere in the building code. Yeah. They said, yeah, you want the permits to do this or the variances, all this stuff. You're going to do some other stuff for this. And I kind of put this in that category. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just be sort of more aggressive is why wouldn't we put our two cents in? And particularly now that the, um, the, you know, the, the, uh, the planning board is going to have a public hearing at the end of the month to kind of sort this out. And they view it very much as a, as sort of a policy issue. It, it's actually pretty interesting looking at the notice, but the, um, the, the town planning board, I think is, effectively saying we've got, you know, we got one part of the town planning and goals for the town that says we want low income housing or affordable housing. And then we got this town center plan and those two aren't matching up. And so they're kind of throwing, you know, they're going to have this hearing, but they want to throw it back at the town council. You tell us, you know, which one you want, the town center or the affordable housing. And I don't know why in that policy debate, we, you know, we wouldn't get involved. And I'm neither, I'm neither pro nor opposed really to the housing. It, it's really, you know, it's going to be energy intensive. And, you know, why couldn't we talk to them to say about, 
you know, you want this, you're going to make it, you know, carbon neutral, or at least, you know, don't put in oil, leak, put in heat pumps, put some solar on it, and put car vehicle charging in it, particularly where the town is being asked to give up a bunch of its parking spaces for the people that live there because the lot isn't big enough to hold them. I think what would be helpful in my view is, is when you're asking for different things to make things essentially greener or less carbon impactful, um, part of, of that, some of them are relatively easy to ask for low cost, low cost and have large impact. Um, for example, if you're requiring people to use, you know, uh, or, or encouraging them to use, you know, heat pumps or other highly efficient technology. Um, well, the cost of doing that is relatively modest and they should be doing it. And we want them to do that. And we don't want them to build the cheapest thing. We want things to last a long time. And because, you know, and, and those other things that essentially can it, it, um, incur a cost to the town to deal with, you know, if it's, if it's poorly built, if it's not well, uh, but there are other things that could be, really quite expensive and you may want to ask for them but i'm telling you right now if i'm the developer and you just put you said i want you to mitigate your carbon footprint and it's going to cost me half a million dollars to do that well i'm going to say well that's what i want my tiff to go up by that much so it's going to be it can be part of that negotiation but i'm saying if we want to make recommendations we should do so in the mind of what are you going to get for it and what's it, what's what what really external costs range are you imposing on that? And that's, that's useful expertise to bring to the table. Yeah. I mean, at this point, though, like I know that the, the you know, the complex, the housing and the Cape integrated health complex is not run on oil or, or, nat or natural gas at all. That's all heat pump, heated and cooled. And that was the, you know, the right economic decision. You know, this is new build. It's not retrofit. You know, they're probably going to have these things air conditioned anyway. They're probably going to do it anyway. And, you know, putting in four or five electric car chargers in that site for residents and stuff, because the problem with car charging, vehicle charging is, all of us that get it, we're going to charge them at home. We're going to put them on our garage. We're going to charge them at home, rarely on the road. The problem for getting more electric vehicles on the road are people that don't have garages or congregate home, home settings. So you're going to put, you know, potentially 49 units or whatever it is in town, which means... 49 or 50 cars and if there's no charging none of those people are going to have electric vehicles and you know four chargers isn't going to cost you know in the middle of this isn't going to cost a whole lot of money i guess my question is around process right i mean you know and, we, and, and I no doubt that we have a lot to say on this and we have some really you know coming you know um uh, you know useful insights to share with the town and you know, and, I, and I'm all, I'm all for a kind of, you know, um, you know, doing what we can to kind of move the project, you know, assuming it moves on, who knows, um, but in a greener direction. But the question is like, you know, how do we do it in a way that doesn't get us our, ourselves in trouble? Um, just in terms of just protocols, right? I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I mean, should, should we, you know, ask for an invitation from the town to weigh in uh, before just jumping in, um, you know, or... Yeah, you know, or maybe is it more appropriate for us just to begin? It seems, it seems like you know maybe kind of you know getting a solicitation from the town to to you know offer you know feedback and commentary would be you know a prudent step. So if you feel like you're weigh in. Yeah, but you know, but you're going to get then you're going to get involved in all the politics of it, and it's unclear to me who wants this and who doesn't want it. And it's clearly that Matt kind of told us to excuse the English phrase "bugger off." Um, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know, if you ask the town council, you know, yes, Penny Jordan, she's going to say, get out of here. You know, because she's a huge supporter of it. Maybe not. Uh, I, I, I do think that this is a great example, though, of trying to set up a dynamic whereby uh, that we are invited to and part of the discussions mm -hmm. for major development or changes in town that are going to have that kind of um, climate impact. Yeah. And, and so, and I guess this is a question to the, to the town council and to the, how, 
if we see something that we think is going to have a major impact in terms of climate footprint and climate impact, um, we think it's part of our remit to um, uh, weigh in on some of that. How, how would you like, what's the best process for doing that? Yeah. Um, because I actually think that's exactly the kind of thing that is really impactful. I'd, I'd rather, you know, uh, focus the expertise on things that are big and are big changes yeah. to make that impact and do it thoughtfully than, than um, you know, small potatoes. Um, and, and so that's, that's really a question of, of if, if the town's in entertaining things that are going to have a big climate impact, how do we engage? And, you know, and you know, some of that may be on our own, you know, one of it is left to our own initiative and one of it is left to their initiative. It's just, you know, we might say, we're sending you a note that says, we think this is going to have a big impact on, 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 you know, climate impact on Cape Elizabeth. Um, we would be interested in providing input around that. What, what would you, what would you like to hear from us? And we can then take, you know, and if they say we're not interested in hearing, I, I would be disappointed because I, I think it does is going to have a big climate impact. And, but being able to um, inquire what guidance they would want from the major impact that it's going to have, I think might be, would be, could be quite useful. Now we were, uh, there was, we were developing some sort of a mission statement or a, or a procedure statement for, uh, for this committee. I mean, yeah. uh, not sure exactly what it was, but um Maybe that can be a vehicle by which we put our foot in the door once we once that's in and approved. So, yeah, the, the, I I think from a from a organizational standpoint, there's two things that we're missing. We we, we is I, I think we need to sort of revisit what that written mandate is and sort of to see if there's an overall uh, and then um, think about translating that into a, a set of goals that we can then report against because you basically have to establish. Uh, mission, goals, baseline, and progress. We we haven't done that in a written form. I mean, I wish we, we've done a lot. Um, I'll come back to this. This is something I'd like to touch base with at the end. I think there's a, I, I'd like to raise for a future meeting a uh, agenda item or, around communication because this is sort of re somewhat related to that. But in terms of things that are going to have a major climate imp footprint impact, like this development, there's, there. I think there should be a piece that we would hope that they would seek input around that piece from you know, the, their you know, people who have the expertise. I, I'm not sure what they want to hear from that point of view, though. But, and I, you know, I think um, you, when you have issues like development, it, it is relatively complex, and we, you know, we, we're not set up to have the the, the discussion right now. I don't think about you know about that, but the question is, what do they want to hear uh, and what would be useful to them in their decision-making from a, you know, the, the climate goal perspective? Because I, I do think they would be interested in that. What's the entity in town that makes the next decisions? Is it the planning board? Planning board, then it goes to the town. council. Council. So we can give them our recommendations and what we would hope for, but since it's a private development, we don't really have any jurisdiction. So but we could start of, you know, start a list of things that are very important for energy standpoint. Well, I, I, I think the idea of, of, of thinking about how to work together with the planning board on major things might be useful. I'm, I'm sad, sad Carrie's not here because she has some overlap in that area, <laughs> seeing as her husband sits on the planning board. Um, but I, because I, I, I do think that's something that they could probably use. Um, and and um, uh, Is the planning board responsible for updating the building code? Who's, where's so that? No, the, no, no, that's one separate. Can, no one can change the building code. That's, an, that's Augusta. Really? However, the planning board is responsible for approving plans that are proposed to the town and they don't have to follow the building code at all. I mean, part of it does, but they, they've, yeah, they, can, they, they have can, a wide range of what they can ask for. Right. 
So, yeah, maybe energy building code isn't the right language, you know, here. Um, but, um, but yeah, can you, what, you know, how can we weigh in and, and, and when? Um, I guess, you know, the question is, you know, do we have, you know, I think, I think kind of, you know, re revisiting our, our, our mission or our mandate, I think is a good thing to do anyway. It's been a couple of years since we've, we're just kind of you know, given this really generic um, uh, kind of, you know, mandate. And so we've, I know we asked for clarification. We haven't always gotten it, but you know, let's, let's get some more precision. I, I would be interested okay. in exploring a, a procedure whereby the planning board may designate something as a major development and would like input on its, the, the climate impact mm -hmm. or, um, and potential, you know, mitigation but, from, you know, from some, from us. Can, can I just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, you know, ask for uh, forgiveness rather than permission kind of guy. <laughs> um, and I, I think that's all well and good, but if we want to chime in, if we think it's appropriate to chime in on this, which is going to be one of the major developments in town, and you've got a hearing, public hearing for the planning committee at the end of the month that's designed to get a result to then to go to town council a month later, because that's to track this things on, you know, you, you know, you sit around, you know, the train's leaving the station on this one. Do we get in or not? I, I think it gets counterproductive if you're sort of, um, if you haven't asked people and understand what information that they want to have to inform them, I think you end up risk being really counterproductive. I mean, because honestly, the challenge here, particularly in a situation with a private developer, is the private developer would love, would want to be a part of whatever discussion we were having about their project, project. And we don't have a line of communication with them at all. They're not before us. Yeah. A and um, we haven't noticed anything about their private project, which is before the planning board. And so that's where it gets messy, in my view. I, I, I I would hope that both the planning board and council would be interested to hear what we might say, but it would be helpful to know from them what they would like to hear. I, I'm not sure. I don't know the answer to that. And if there's things we think are missing from what they want to hear, we can let them know that. From what I've seen in all the materials in the meeting, they're, they're not talking about this at all about the energy input, about the carbon footprint, about this, any of that stuff. It's just not there. Let's ask the, let's ask the planning board, you know, if this is something they thought about and if they would like our, our input. I mean, do we have- I, I, I think you have to ask the, the, the planning board and the town council almost at the same time, partly yeah. because the, the town council is the one that set out we want to have climate goals. Planning board reports to them, obviously. Yeah, and, and well, their relationship is a little muddier than that because planning boards are by design independent. Yeah. And so it's a little muddier than that. So actually I think that th this, is, this is when you may wanna make the request to both of them. But I think if you're gonna go make that request, it's gotta be done quickly. Yes. I think in making that request, it's, it, you know, it's gotta say, you know, do you realize that you know, in a town like Cape Elizabeth, residential dwelling, is the number one source of greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, you know, it's you know it's it. You know we've got no industry. It's that and cars, and so you, you need to effectively talk about if you want to have this plan, you want some people to weigh in on this and what that impact would be. But you got you got to kind of state it. You know, do you understand that? You know, this is how Cape has got to deal with you know do its bid on greenhouse gas emissions. I think any major development is going to have significant climate impact. Yeah. And, I, and that's the way I would phrase it, because I really, this should be an ongoing conversation about any major development. And this, this is the example that's brought it to a head. And yeah, it's happening quickly. But so what's the, what's the, what are the, the steps to um, get in front of planning board and town council, you know, before it's too late to weigh in on this. Um, I mean, can Matt, you know, give us, I mean, let's say, I know you already reached out to Matt Perry, 
And Matt was like, you know, it's just, I've got the language yeah. right, but it was like basically just, you know, it's, 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 it's not in your purview, but I, I think you would be open to having us explore a dialogue. I think it is in our purview. I think, I think Sam is, I think someone picks up the phone to Jamie Garvin and says, you know, this is kind of what we're here. What do you think? And then have, you know, yeah. you know, maybe talk to Carrie's husband, you know, on the planning committee, but like, you know, we think this is something, would you, you know, we've got some thoughts. Do you want to hear from us? Uh, mm -hmm. So my guess is the way this might happen procedurally would be a memo from the energy committee to say, this is happening with the major development. It's raised this issue about whether, um, about the town and its climate goals and whether you, how you might get input on climate impact of major yeah. development in town. Yeah. And so um, the energy committee would, um, would like to offer its exper expertise relative to major developments in town on an ongoing basis and look, searching for the right process to do that, including on this project. Does that make sense? That's not, that sounds so, like so a very really reasonable next step. So what you're asking for, I think, and I think it makes a lot of sense, instead of pointing in and saying, this, this is the only issue we're going to do deal with, we'd <laughs> like to ex either expand or define some of the things that we think we can do and add that to our charter and be, and, and you, you're, and, and the council understands that this is what we're here for as well for anything like this. Mm -hmm. I think that. Right. Sam, this is where I would disagree a little bit and not ask to expand to our charter because looking at the charter, I think it's already yeah. there. Yeah. Well, well, I have to just bring up the, the, uh, bring it up in a, such a way that we think, this is this is our purview. We love to be be involved in this thing. We have an expertise here, and we can only help but, but contribute to these kind of issues. What's not in our charter, though, is 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 um, putting things before us that are not right now. This is before the planning board, so our our input is got right, if it's going to go through the planning process has to be at the invitation of the planning board or at the direction of the town council for what is before the town right now on this topic mm -hmm. and i think that's the that's the, the the key and the question i would have is to the town is if you set out climate goals and you've got major development going on where are you getting your climate impact and and climate um uh and um information from on the, on major development and we're saying we think you could get we, we're built to do that now if it's not us then where is it where's it coming from and how, like an, an egg thing isn't it oh sorry right, well, all right but if, if you they've they've set out in their goals around they've got goals on the town council level around climate they got, yeah, and, language, they got yeah. goals, mm -hmm. and their goals in the comprehensive plan around climate right, and sustainability but, right but we, so we have but well, as a town, for example, we're, <laughs> we're doing things, but we, you know, it's hard to measure those goals because the town hasn't, hasn't set a baseline yet. On the other hand, that doesn't mean you just, you know, don't do anything. We're saying if you've got climate goals and you're, do, and you're con contemplating major development, where's the climate piece of that and how does that work? And so how, we're offering our expertise to be part of your process. How, what's, how do we, you know, how do you do that? Barbara, what do you think? Um, part of me says we are tasked with helping the town improve its own footprint, energy footprint, but residential is a big part of this town as well. So I would say we should, if we think it's a good idea, is to sort of come up with a list of suggestions for this kind of development. So. Um, have the planning board and council sort of consider the climate impacts um suggest like sort of maybe maybe make a list of things that they should take into consideration like preparing for solar preparing for electric vehicles that kind of thing heat pumps and then the re maybe the reasons why and the economics of all those are going to be cheaper in the long run sort of a, more of an informational 
thing rather than a requirement of developers at this point, since we really don't have any jurisdiction here, but I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I think that information and feedback would be useful. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm would prefer to have the town ask for it. Um, uh, you know, and just to, to say like, you know, yes, we affirm that we are, you know, we, we are willing to hear this, you know, to, to get feedback from you, you know, on projects like this, you know, and that kind of gives us a green light whenever something like this opens up, you know, to, yeah. to provide that. But they also might not even be thinking about this. So well, since, no, this yeah. project, since this project is coming up quickly, we might want to give them a little bit of education on yeah. things they should think be thinking about with this project mm -hmm. as well, just put mm -hmm. in gen have it be more of a general thing. Right. So in the minimum so memo that John was talking about, you yeah. know, include, include, include that sort of that yeah, context. Yeah, just a little bit of context or education. Yeah. So they can say, oh, maybe we, you know, since they're asking for so much, maybe we could ask for certain things too. So I, I, I think the, from the town point of view, I think you can, there's always a list of things you can ask for and it's going to cost and it's going to be, it's just going to be part of the negotiation. But from the town point of view also, it's a question of how you build major developments, you know, put more or less of a burden on things that the town provides, whether, you know, um, you know, everyone's always focused, I think wrongly so on things like parking, but there's other infrastructure and other costs as well that may be more. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't know right now, I mean, things like water and sewage and, um, uh, you know, electric vehicles is a good example, things, things like waste, things like, it's like in, all, all together, you know, uh, at, sort of add up to your impact. Um, and, um, and then it's also a little bit of, of a compare to what, um, because in general, you know, uh, understanding Dense, dense housing tends to be greener. Yeah. Well, are we in, in uh, general agreement that um, yeah we should write something to the to the town council and to uh, planning board saying we have thoughts on this. We have some really relevant, you know. Um, well, uh, feedback, you know, and like, let us again, let us give us, you know, give us a chance to, you know, formally contribute to this conversation. Um, I'm of two minds. I, I think there's part of it is, like I said, I'd be interested to know, to know what they would like to hear about the climate impact mm -hmm. piece. And if the answer is, we don't know, why don't you tell us what we need to know? That's, that's fine. Um, the answer is we want to hear A and B, but you, and we, we may come back and say, well, you want to hear about A and B, but C is also really the big thing. Um, you should know that. Um, but at least then you've got the dialogue going. Or the other one to just say, we think you need to, we should consider at a minimum A, B, and C and let us know what else you'd be interested in. And I don't know what that list is. I, still, they, they got the, um, I, I will say the one thing yeah. I will say is I'm very leery of a process that um, in the end actually just makes development harder. I want to make development greener, not harder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if the planning board wants to make it harder, that's up to the that's up to them, and I think. They, <laughs> they, <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah, just this isn't the NIMBY the committee. I just point right. you to the recordings of the planning board sessions to understand. Well, let's. I think I, I think we should reach out. We should reach out to planning board and, and the um, and uh, you know the council so, and kind of tell them we have I'm, things. To say about what, this. what I'm going to suggest is that we approve sort of drafting a memo and circulate it, and then um, have suggested changes. And when we're happy with it, we send that out from the committee. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
and we obviously we should do this with a sense a sense of um uh you know haste isn't, isn't the right word but knowing that the clock is ticking um we should probably you know seek to you know get that out before we meet again right I think the, the 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 clock isn't ticking till they sit down and go through the nitty gritty on what's in and out of the TIF and what that really looks like, and that's months away. I guess if I'm looking at it, it you know, at the end of the month, the planning board's going to have a public hearing, and what I angle for is we have something written and we make sure that we're on the ability as a committee to speak at that planning board hearing, and then again later at a, at a council hearing to give our views. That's the goal I would make. I, I would, I think I would like to understand how the planning board and or town council would like to hear the information. And if we think that's wrong, we should say so. But I, I, um, I, I think if we don't, uh, I, I think we do it otherwise, I don't, I'm not sure we'll be listened to. That's my, that, I think there's a big risk in, in, pushing ahead without uh, saying, I want to tell you this, no matter what you think. Um, when um, what we're saying is this is going through your normal processes. This touches on stuff that's important to we think to, and we know about, we'd like to understand how we can fit into the process um, so that it's, it's well considered. Um, and, you know, if the answer is, well, we don't want to hear from you at all on this. That's a different, that's one discussion. If the answer is well, we want to hear from you and here's how, it's a different discussion. But I don't know which one we're going to have. And I, I don't think it's going to take that long to find out. Perry, as our official liaison to the, um, our local government, um, do you have a reaction to what, what might be the, the, the most appreciated way forward? I, I mean, I, I agree with John and, and, you know, John, John and I have pretty much known each other since I started at Cape and uh, I've seen John in action at both council meetings and school board meetings. And, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I think he's got a, a, a fair amount of experience with both sides of the table. Um, I do agree that, you know, I, I think we should generate a memo, pass it around the group. Everybody kind of weighs in and uh, go from there. So to, to do this sort of more officially, we should pass that around. If we have a draft that we're going to send along, we probably ought to just have a quick emergency meeting that we notice for about 24 hours and then vote on it so that it's published and public has a chance to comment on it before we send it along. Um, that really doesn't take any time to do a Zoom meeting. You just need to get a quorum 24 hours in advance. We should, and it should take, if there's one item on the emergency meeting, it can take virtually no time. But that's what we should do process wise in my view do we want to um ask the planning board and the council if they want a memo or like john's was saying this is a memo saying we think this we we think this is important and we have expertise we'd like to you know we'd like to know how you'd like to receive in input on in your process and if the answer is we don't want any input, it's, like I said, that's a different discussion, which is how, how the hell are you ever going to meet your climate goals? <laughs> or if they say, yes, we're, we would like to hear A and B, well, and we, the discussion may be, well, okay, we'll be able to provide you with A and B, but you ought to know that C is really the big thing here. <laughs> but like I said, you, you, you want to start by asking them how to fit into their process, because it is, it is before the planning board and will before, be before the town council. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the climate action goals now for 2021, and I mean, I, it falls right in there, and I, I think it's legitimate because it's it's easy to put your goals on paper, but, but what are you going to do about them? Well, like I said, the challenge is they don't have any baseline for those goals, so they're really mushy right now. Yeah. But, but again, part of what we want to do is push them not to be mushy. Right. That makes, I think it makes a lot of, you know, a ton of sense. Yeah, we'll circulate a memo. Um, hopefully we can meet, you know, on it 
um, look, for too long. Of them was already drafted. I can add some stuff to it. Okay. That's a good starting point. Okay. Um, perfect. So then, so yeah, when we think that you've, yeah, maybe next week, you know, um, we can set a time or maybe we can, you know, proactively set a time so now I, I, for an emergency meeting. Give us a deadline. So I think we, I'm trying to think of the right pro procedure to do this. We should probably mm -hmm. have uh, a couple people who are drafting and then send out for comments, have our emergency meeting and vote. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me, frankly, that like Tom and I are honestly the farthest apart on some of this. And then um, in, in terms of approach, um, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But if Tom and I agree on wording, I think we're probably going to be good. I don't, we, may, we may not. I don't know. But I would suggest that that way it, we're just the committee t tells energy committee tells Tom and I go draft something. We draft it. We pre present it, and then we can make any additional changes at the emergency meeting and vote on it. That gives us transparency. Well, the thing is, are we going to draft? Are we asking? A, are we writing a memo to ask for permission, or is someone going to talk to people and say, "How do you want us to engage?" All I'm suggesting is writing a memo. I haven't um, I, I, I addressed talking to people directly. Um, That, you see, I, 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 just, I just kind of think it would be appropriate for Sam or, or someone else to just you know, talk to Jamie Garvin and talk to the chair of the planning committee and say, you know, you've got this, you know, have you thought about this? How can we help you in this process and the engaging? So and then take it from there. Um, I think that, that's fine. I think if we just have Sam talk to, the, talk to them on that basis, um, then maybe we may just avoid the whole And then when process. they say, yeah, why don't you write us a memo? Then we've got a memo. But, you know, it, it seems like, you know, writing a memo saying, gee, should we engage with you on this one just seems kind of a waste of time. <laughs> well, yeah. But I, I, it's raising that bigger issue, though, which I think is important, which is how do you get climate, relevant climate information about major development? How is that integrated into your process? Because right now it's not. No. That's the major issue that this raised and that I'm trying to address broadly, but also with this specific project in mind. That's fair. I mean, I think we just kind of want to get direction in terms of, you know, how we can contribute, you know, to, to you know, to well, projects I, that have climate impacts. Right. Significant climate impact. Everything's going to have something, but this is a yeah, significant sure. climate impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we and basically want to be written into the into you know the protocols that the the planning board, um, you know, that if some sort of trigger is flipped, you know, then well, then we get a phone call, or we well, get a, we get a, a oh, that, what, you know, the, what I would expect is the planning board says, okay, this looks like you know it's now gone to the preliminary approval process, and as part of our process for we, we think it's going to be a major development. We're going to have a joint meeting with the energy committee. We're going to talk about the climate impacts of this project, and when they're going to come in, and we're going to figure out what we need, else we need to know about it, and we're going to come back with the you know report and recommendation on the climate aspects of a major development. It just be part of their process, as it should be. Well, I'll I schedule. Would. I think what I'll propose is I'll schedule um, a call with uh, with the chair of town council and chair of the planning board, um, and yeah, you know, anybody can join. Um, hopefully, it won't take too long. Um, but then we'll at least we'll, we'll get we'll get an answer. You know, in terms of you know what, okay. what, what degree of openness you know is there? What 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 what, what, what by what 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 by what you know path you know should yeah. we you know. I, I, I do think we want to still keep it in that, you know, even though we're, it's important that we deal with the issue in front of us, yeah. keeping it in this broad context is really mm -hmm. important for getting the process right. Yeah, right. Because, um, you know, the, you know, honestly, another project, major project could come up tomorrow and we'd feel the same thing. We'd say, yeah. look, this is going to have a huge climate impact. What are you, how are you going to track that town council and planning board? And they're going to be like, I don't know. 
Yeah, the process should be should be um, uh, you know regardless of a specific project. It, sh you're it shouldn't at, right? be out of sight, out of mind if you're going to have climate goals. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what are you doing about it? Yeah. So you guys okay with, with, with that scheduling? Yeah, you know, I'll schedule a call with um, uh, those two folks and you know, everyone's invited? Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so that will be continued, but I'll probably set up a call next week. Um, and um, you guys, we, weekday, okay. I mean, if, if, who, want, who wants to come? John, do you want to be on that? Tom, do you want to be, be on that? I would be interested on that, yeah. Okay. Um, weekday, whatever yeah. is fine. Okay, hopefully it won't, won't be here too long. Um, okay, excellent. Um, and then I know it's 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 eight thirty one. I don't know if we have an official. Yeah, you know, stop at eight at um, the hour. But John, you about to say something? I have one more item I'd like to sort of touch base on before we adjourn. So you know, and I also, I also wanted to touch base on some of the things that um, um, Perry was going to look into last week or last last mm -hmm. time. Um, go ahead, John. So this is just an agenda request for the future. Yeah. Um, um, someone was talking to me a little bit about just sort of following along what the energy committee is doing and what they're up to. And it was sort of following along with the minutes and the minutes were kind of hard to find. And what we did oh. was not, not all that clear. And, and I realized that they had a, a broader point, which is actually really important, which is how are we communicating? So I think we've done a good job of communicating with um, town council and Matt and, and everyone's sort of on board. But I think the broader communications from the energy committee um, is not as good as it, it could have been. And what I was going to think about doing is, is, uh, um, is thinking about how we might want to do something that was about, you know, perhaps quarterly or something yeah. like that. So every, every, you know, three months or so that we write a little quarterly newsletter that talks about all the things that, we, you know, here's what we've done. Here's what we're working on now. Here's what we hope to work on in the future type of um, newsletter that's out there that's more easily digestible and might have, and have links to the stuff we've talked about in the past that's uh, available online. Um, I think that could be effective uh, and to help us get the word out and more broadly in the public what we're doing. Because I think, you know, people who followed what we're doing closely, you know, I think this committee has done a lot of really cool stuff and we, ha we haven't sort of compiled it in a, uh, um, and communicated that out in a way that is um, as effective as it rather is. Than rather than, rather mm -hmm. than committing, newsletter, why don't we... Uh, the courier quarterly. Um, that could be an easy an, an outcome of it. And, and, and you know, certainly that, that would certainly appeal. Um, Comes out yes. like a press release. But there's a lot of things you can do, but I, I'm but just um, setting out to do something with a specific intent to communicate to broadly to the public. And it takes that view of here's what we've done. Here's what we're working on. Here's what we hope to do type of approach. Um, so people can uh, follow us, participate and bring things to our attention. Um, well, that'd be, that'll be agenda item number, number one when we meet um, in April. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Can you know, can really getting, kind of having that, that interactive, um, a relationship, you know, with with our 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 constituents, I think it makes a ton of sense. Um, um, so um, so that's good. So, Perry, make make note of that for our next um, uh, meeting. Um, and just one and one thing I see on the meetings minutes from last week, um, you were going to check and see what the status of the L, the uh, streetlight project was. Um, were you able to get the information about about that? The uh, yeah, Matt had said that the street lighting is being handed off to CMP. Uh, they are going to convert it to LEDs, but they're also going to maintain them. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like a win-win. Uh, too good to be true, but that way that was that way the town is not responsible for the maintenance on the street lights and and handling the service that needs to happen to them. So. Good. All right. So that's that. Check that box. We're where yeah. We're um that that problem solved. Are we getting the savings? What savings are we getting? Do that. We're we're getting savings. I can't tell you what the savings is. We didn't get into that part of the conversation. But we don't get the polls. Right. 
The mm. polls have a lot of value. Yeah, he was, he, he was looking in the savings of the upkeep of the lights. I understand. Yeah. Uh, I wish they had made another decision. But I wasn't. Yeah, I, I was not part of these conversations. <laughs> what about the polls? Hmm? That could be in our quarterly report. <laughs> A lot um, you can do with polls. Yep. Um, at one point, um, before we totally close the discussion on um, supplemental power, um, were we clear on how much we are going to purchase, instruct uh, Matt to purchase? If you open up your chat, I summarized what we've, some history there. We want to specify, I didn't catch that we specified what number uh, we're going after. Richard, I think we should know what the number should be in our own minds. But I think it's all, it, it, it is always falls on the developer to make a recommendation to. Oh, in every case. So uh, they'll anal should be able to analyze the data and they've got the other data and make a recommendation for us. But I think we, you know, we, we could talk about that still leaves us the responsibility to talk about uh, what we think the future is, right? You know, should we get 80% or 85%? But we, we should also have the input from the developer as well. Right. So TBD. Okay. okay. Uh, one other point, um, we talked about um, uh, getting a um, efficiency main rebate on the um, yeah. heat pumps we're installing. Yeah. Um, it took them three weeks, but they finally got back to me. And what they said was the contractors, if it's an approved contractor from by Efficiency Maine, then they should make the application for the rebate, the contractor. So it's not up to us. Perry just has to tell the contractor to apply for the rebate. And I communicated that to Perry. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other items um, not on the agenda that we want to discuss, or should we um, uh, adjourn till till um, I guess three weeks now? Maybe because we skipped a, we skipped a week. Um, any final thoughts or emotions? Um, we have a motion to adjourn. I'm I'm I move we uh, uh, consider a date for a future potluck and adjourn. <laughs> then you can come over and get get your shots. Yeah. Um, I move we adjourn. I'm second. Second. Yeah. <laughs> All third, right. Four, third, fourth. Third. Yay. Okay. <laughs> move, move. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. Take care.